It's Wednesday night, and that means it's time for the Lamar Thomas Show, featuring the greatest receiver in the history of college football. Just ask them. Lamar Thomas. I was born in uh, Ocala, Florida. I moved to Gainesville to go to high school. Been recruited probably since the ninth grade, illegally, I might add, by the University of Florida. I, I still can remember Coach Solinger, Don Solinger, coming out to our practice one day. Here it is, this guy comes out in the University of Miami jacket, and, and I, I said, I can't believe that's Miami out here. And, you know, I wanted to go up and say, hey, I'm Lamar Thomas. And, and actually, I, I did walk up to him and I said, hey, Coach, uh, I'm Lamar Thomas. And he said, I know. And that was the start of my uh, relationships with uh, the University of Miami. Half another good block and throw it away. come down here, you'll be on TV every weekend dominating. I thought about it. I said, man, where do I sign? My mom, uh, on Saturday mornings, I would wake up and she'd be holding my hand. I thought she was the weirdest lady in the world. <laughs> but she was holding my hands and she would be rubbing them and saying, one day these hands are gonna make you a lot of money. <laughs> oh, she was smart. So now, here he is. The great one, along with co-host Gary Furman of Kingsport.com, Lamar Thomas. What's going on, LT? You see the smile on my face, man? Do you see it, Gary? Do you see it? Do I can see, see it. it. Oh, man, we won a game. We won a good game. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's start out by welcoming everybody to this week's Lamar Thomas show presented by Canesware. And you can see Lamar is sitting in Canesware where they have the largest selection of Miami Hurricanes merchandise that you could find anywhere. So if you're going to the game uh, tomorrow night against Bethune-Cookman, um, make Canesware your first stop on the way down University Drive. Um, they're at 2655 South University Drive uh, in Davie, about 15 minutes from the rock and uh, you can go get yourself some new shirts and hats and stuff to wear to the game. And if you don't feel like going all out for your tailgate, you can even could pick up a La Spada sub next door uh, while you're at it. And uh, without question, the best sub shop in South Florida. So uh, make sure you check out Canesware and we'll be showing you some of the stuff and, and talking about Canesware all night long. Um, but LT, we would be remiss if we didn't start this evening with, a celebratory moment. The Miami Hurricanes <laughs> showed up on Saturday, a 15-point oh, victory man. over Texas A&M that really could have yes. been much worse. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they made a loud proclamation to mm -hmm. the college football world, not that the U is back. It is exactly. way too early for that. Um, okay. But that the U is going to have to be respected this year. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I like the way you put that. Um, you know, I, I hated uh, looking at Twitter and people saying they're back. Back to what? You got to win a ring like this to get back somewhere. Uh, but I'm just happy that we were able to make a great showing on national TV in front of a national audience. Because let's let's be honest, people tune in to see what Miami is about. They tune in to see Miami fail, or they tune in to see if what what you know what our swag is about so the fact that we're able to play a great game on national tv in front of millions and win uh against a i think a good quality team in texas a and m uh it goes a long way and to walk out of that stadium with that great feeling that i hadn't felt like that um, obviously i wasn't there for the notre dame game because i was coaching at the university of kentucky but that's what i kind of would imagine it feeling like because 
you know, even though the stand, the stands were not packed, which that will that will get better because we're winning now. They will come. They not all. I won't say it'll be packed tomorrow night, but the next couple games it will get packed. Packed, and guess what? Uh, it will be a great environment, uh, an environment that we haven't seen there at the University of Miami in that stadium in a long time. Yeah, I mean, already there's just so much for us to talk about. Uh, you know, you could start with the fact that there were only 49,000 people there for the Texas A&M mm-hmm. game. Uh, that was a disappointment. But it, was a, it, was a, it was a loud 49,000. Ask Texas A&M about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about it. It was a loud 49. Um, but I think it was an, an initial statement of, hey, we are not happy mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the entire South Florida sports community. We are not happy with what we have seen lately. Show mm-hmm. us, you know, sh- show us something yeah. and then we will come back. And, yeah. you know, my, Miami football stepped up yeah. to the plate. You know, they, they rose to the occasion uh, in that regard. Um, now you got tomorrow night. You got right. all this. You, you got all this euphoria and you've got Bethune Cookman on mm-hmm. the schedule. And uh, I don't know about you, Lamar. Mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, I've about had it with these games uh, that, that are going to be 70 to three in college football. Um, the conferences are getting bigger. Let's mm-hmm. go to nine, 10 uh, conference games, uh, you, you know, even 11 if you want and play meaningful football games mm-hmm. against meaningful opponents. Mm-hmm. Uh, enough of these pay games in college football. Uh, I understand it supports uh you know a lot of a lot of the colleges that don't have big budgets Mm -hmm. um but maybe we could find a a different way to do that uh than making their kids come down to a place like hard rock on a thursday night in the middle of the week and get themselves beat by 60 points which is well we'll probably well well, that's what you remember dion was talking about um the the hbcu school the smaller schools come in get paid but it actually destroys their team because their players get hurt they're be- better players. I mean, obviously, they want to play against the better schools, but, you know, you leave that thing um, with money in your pocket, but your season's pretty much in shambles because you lost some of your key players uh, going up against bigger teams. So, and you're demoralized. Uh, and, it's, and you're demoralized. I mean, it, but, in front of your but, families. And- but, but on top of that, let's go on the flip end of it. For some of those freshmen and sophomores and juniors that are um, – behind the starters and the second team and third team guys they get an opportunity to play in front of uh college football in front of and walk on they get an opportunity to play college football so it it, it has its, its its positives and negatives uh so i could see you know hey the game might be 50 to whatever but some of those guys get to play that probably wouldn't have gotten to play but you have all this euphoria and now, like you said, you know the crowd's not going to be huge no. uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow night at Hard Rock. No. I mean, if 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 we had forty nine for Texas A and M, what are we going to have for this thirty five? Maybe. I mean, realistically, well, uh, on, on a Thursday night. Uh, after well, work? hopefully, hopefully the Bethune brings their band. You know, so I'm I'm hoping that happens. So we'll have some entertainment. But uh, count them. <laughs> yeah, count them. That that puts us about twenty eight. Couple in hundred. Yeah. Um, but. It's, it's going to be interesting. What, what I want to see out of this game is just to continue to ride the wave, uh, be consistent on offense and defense. I thought we did a, 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 a good job of it. Obviously, on special teams, we want to shore up some things because, remember, we were down because of two special team blunders in the beginning. We were down, and we had to fight our way out of the hole, which actually special teams bailed us out with the return. So I would like to see consistency, but – you know, at the same time, man, what a game, what an atmosphere. And I just, you know, I hate having to go on the Bethune Cookman because I want to talk so much about this, this Texas A&M game because it was such a, uh, I was, I was happily surprised. I guess that's the best way to put it. So let's do it, man. Let's, let, let's, let's unpack this thing. I, I guess you got to start with the quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, yeah. and mm-hmm. he's back. I mean, he's back to what he was or better a couple of years ago and very accurate, very consistent. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he had, uh, what was it? 300 and, uh, it was 374 yards officially mm-hmm. uh, in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, could have even been way more. I mean, Miami only ran, I think 54 plays on offense. 
Um, the amazing thing to me when you look at the stats was Texas A&M ran 28 more plays mm -hmm. in the game. 28 more plays, Lamar. But Miami still won the yardage battle, and, and that tells you about the big plays. Uh, yeah. I mean, you couldn't be happier by what you saw from Tyler Van Dyke. Well, you know, the fact that we didn't have all those. You remember last year, and I, I hate to go back to last year, but you have to because it was a million miles from that because he threw some bad interceptions last year. And this year with Shannon Dawson, who I give a lot of credit, uh, I, I want to give a lot of credit to both of those coordinators for for, for doing an outstanding job in uh, game planning, Texas A&M. Uh, it's almost like, remember what we talked about two years ago? We felt like Van Dyke was in that offense with that coordinator. Last year, he wasn't in that offense with that coordinator. You understand what I'm saying? I think that this year's coordinator with Van Dyke Right now, they're on the same page, and no he's doubt. calling plays to let the kid feel comfortable. I don't. He, last year, he wasn't comfortable, and also, the offensive line is playing better. So you got a couple things that are um, that are going in his way for him to be successful. You got a better offensive line play. You got better play calling um, to suit this style of offense. Um, uh, I hey. Again, I was pleasantly surprised with, with our offensive play. I love the fact that our receivers were making plays. Cool, uh, big shout out to KB and what he's done with those guys. Um, you know, I sent him a text about the big guy. I was a little upset with the big guy for for um, la the first game for tapping his helmet, coming out in the red zone. Hey, man, you're the guy. Number four, you're the guy. Okay, you don't come out for anybody. He's got to start. Game, he's got to learn to think like yeah, that. Yeah, and so last game, I saw him. A guy was coming in. He said, "Uh-uh, nah, I'm staying in." And I was like, "That's what I'm talking about." Uh, Restrepo uh, making plays. All those guys just making plays. I mean, it felt great to watch uh, a guy catch a a five yard out and turn it into 25, 30 yards. You know, that's what Hurricane football used to look like. And uh, I was again pleasantly surprised. So the special teams implode. They're down 10-0. Mm -hmm. Puts a little bit of pressure on the offense, Lamar. Mm -hmm. An offense that had never done it together yeah. with a coordinator who had never done it with this group of personnel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a game on this type of stage. I mean, I mean, you know, realistically, I mean, Miami, Texas A&M drawing the second largest audience mm -hmm. in college football last week. Is probably a little bit bigger than anything Shannon Dawson had experienced in the uh, earlier part of his career. Mm -hmm. I hope mm -hmm. I'm being fair there. I'm certainly not looking to show any disrespect. I am a huge Shannon Dawson fan. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's under the gun, Lamar. I mean, yeah. they're down to nothing. They have got mm -hmm. to have this game. There, There is no scenario by which Miami can lose that Texas A&M game last week that was the super bowl i don't care that it was non-conference <laughs> when you're coming off five and seven when you're going into year two of mario when you're making the commitment that this university is making to this program mm -hmm. now you have got to step up to the plate and perform and they did um but they were under the gun down yeah down. it was no it was no scenario that we would feel good about a moral victory in this game because we 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 experienced that last year walking away from the Texas A&M game. So, oh, okay, we're not that bad, and we'll be okay, and it turned out to be crap. So this game was, like you said, when, like we said last week, we thought it was a must-win for the Hurricanes, and they came out, they played well. Uh, the offensive line played well. The cornerbacks, as one of Smiley 007 Kane said, cornerbacks played well against their, their big receivers, fast receivers. I mean, uh, defensively, I thought Guidry, I'm, I'm not trying to change subject, but I thought he had a, a a great game plan. He did some things to Petrino in his offense as far as he was moving, he was shifting the D-line. You know, there are a lot of things, keys for, for Bobby Petrino in his offense, and he, he took them away. He moved them around. He made Bobby, and I, I would, you know, Bobby's not a, a hurry-up guy. He's not going to get up there and just call a play. He's going to look over it first. And, and see what you're going to do and then counter it. And what Gidry was able to do, 
he moved that he he gave him a three technique here over the over the guard and then he moved to over the center and your run blocking is messed up your pass blocking is messed up i mean he did a it was a it was a great game plan and the defense played well the offense played well obviously special teams uh those blunders in the beginning but we were able to make up for it later on in the game with the kick return so now, overall overall mario <laughs> We'll talk more about the offense for sure and the receivers and, and, uh, but you bringing this up, I might as well go right to it right now. I mean, you coached alongside Bobby Petrino at Louisville, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, you know him well, you understand mm -hmm. his offense, how he coaches. What was that experience like for him on Saturday night? Well, I know before the game, he was excited, you know, here it is. And we talked about it last week. He had some great athletes out there. Um, they thought they had a great game plan. Uh, but, you know, here it is. He knows what he wants to do. And Lance, you know, gave him one thing. And it was almost like he gave him this, this, the, the stanky leg on one leg and then took it back. I mean, it was, it was a beautiful game plan on defense of what he was able to do to Coach Petrino in that offense where it made them – I mean, I thought – my opinion, I thought they were going to be able to move the ball up and down – the up and down the uh, football field, but Miami gave him problems. They gave him a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, so now moving forward, you can't get too far ahead of yourself. I mean, uh, yeah. everybody wants to, everyone's excited. Uh, you can't uh, get ahead of yourselves. And I mean, the one big thing that they have to guard against is what uh, one of our viewers free information is bringing is bringing up here in his in his uh, comments. One game at a time, Lamar. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know you you can't you can't ruin what you did on Saturday night by letting up against, uh, say, a Georgia Tech team that is better this year than they were a year ago. Now, you know Miami should win that game if Miami shows up to play. Mm -hmm. But if you don't show up to play, that program has proven in years past that they can get you. And, yeah. you know, they have enough athletes on that team to make things miserable for you if you don't show up ready for play. Um, I don't know about Temple. I have not really looked at Temple much, you know, in terms of next week's game. Obviously, Bethune-Cookman is not going to be a threat um, tomorrow night. Uh, but how do, how do coaches – yeah, I'm not even going to begin to imagine that. <laughs> but how do coaches and players stay grounded at a moment like this, Lamar? You know – it's it's one of those things where you know you're looking at the schedule you're making sure you have for let's say a bethune coming you have a a game plan that's doable and you in because you know you're going to be able to play a lot of players so you make a game plan that's doable to the majority of the guys over there whether it's all offensive defense um and keep it simple and and you try not to give away too many things because remember you have other games coming up but you're promising those those guys that don't hardly get to play. Here's your opportunity. You're going to get a chance to play. And you're telling those guys that are starters, hey, you go in, do your job, do it to the best of your abilities, keep the momentum going, then let those other guys play. And that's how we that's how you kind of look at it. And you know, the whole week you're you're telling those those guys that that hey you know, if you're playing a Murray State, for example, at Louisville, we're playing Murray State. I'm telling those guys that are third and fourth guy, hey, you're going to get a lot of playing time this week, okay? Devontae Parker is not going to play that much. He's going to play. He's going to catch one or two touchdowns. He's going to get out, okay? So it's your job to prepare yourself. I'm going to be talking to you a lot more this week because you're the one that's going to be playing 80% of the time if we take care of our business. So take they're pushing those guys also to take care of their business because they want to play. Yeah, no doubt. Well, the Canes fan is euphoric, uh, as you would expect, and uh, perfect moment to bring in our voice of the fan, uh, Bruce Warner. Uh, I mean, speak speak for the masses, Bruce. I mean, everyone's pretty fired up. Well, it's funny what you just said. You said one game at a time, and then you blew past Bethune and you blew past Temple, and you were, <laughs> you were getting us ready for Georgia Tech. I, have been not, well, I personally have not looked much at Temple, so I don't know how good they are. Well, did they lose to Rutgers? Okay. They're not uh, good. They're not good. I'll, I'll look it up. But anyway, uh, LT, I think this game was a bigger win than the Notre Dame game because we kicked Notre Dame's mm. ass right from the get-go. 
This mm. game showed us the, we needed to see physicality. We saw it. We saw them under adversity. They came back. You know, mm -hmm. they were challenged. They came back. Then they mm -hmm. put them away. So to me, this was the biggest victory in years because yeah. the Notre Dame game was a slaughter. They were never even in the game. What do you think about that? This was uh, so important for us. Yeah, it, just like you said, I mean, the fact that they showed, um, I mean, they were down. I mean, they, uh, we were in the box and you could just hear people say, oh, here we go. Right, here we oh go. my God, here we go. And they, they just kept grinding. And the fact that it, it was just a different vibe about watching them play. Like, I didn't feel like when they were down that they were basically out of it. It just looked like a different vibe. I felt different. And they definitely showed that they were a different ball club, uh, coached differently, um, prepared differently. Yes. Um, and that's the most important thing about it. You got to prepare. And you can't go into a game saying, okay, we're going we're gonna to be on top the whole time. You're gonna be, they're going to they're gonna have their good plays. You're going to have your good plays. Okay? The difference is, when do you make those plays and how do you make those plays and and do they count the most and we made plays after the turnovers that i mean just made for those forty-nine thousand that were there oh my god and you know you what it. you Even missed it look in retrospect we won the game we know that but yes. at the time i was nervous but you know what it could be a blessing in disguise look what they showed they showed yeah. absolute moxie that you know what we're not going to give up and for those during the offseason, because I know Gary preached it all the time, and I was definitely in agreement, that said that Tyler Van Dyke is not that good, you're nuts. He's the only quarterback on this team that could do something like that. And anybody mm -hmm. that says somebody else should have been the starter is dead wrong. This guy, he better not get hurt. He is spectacular. Well, put, put a, put that, a, that offensive line was whoa. Yeah, I was just I was just about to say that. Put, thank the offensive line for that because I yes. thought they played a, a – a, a pretty damn good game against a pretty big athletic D line uh, in, in Texas A&M, and that's that's what had me worried the most. Mm -hmm. I thought that because of the SEC, those big athletic, big uglies as we call them in the SEC, uh, I thought they were going to. But again, Maribel, he talked about how how excited he was about this this group that he had, and it was on full display of what they were able to do. I mean, I, I was. I was impressed. Right. But now, they really didn't run the ball that well because they were stacking the box, which is what right. they should do. They should dare him to go over the top. And I guess what? He did. He guess what? Isaiah Horton was with that little stop and go. Wow. And I mean, that was that was picture perfect. The whole thing was he was on target almost every throw. Uh, he had a couple of drops. You know, the one that hit, yeah. that hit um, Kobe Young right in the belly, mm -hmm. and he dropped it on a third down. But you can't say anything negative about this team, not after the way they played. Now we have to worry about the injuries. I don't know any of the updates. I mean, I've talked to some people, but still, um, we can't lose any more D-linemen. For sure we can. Well, Branson Dean looked like if he had to go back in the game, he could. Oh. He was on he, he was on the bike on the sideline. Mesador, um, we don't know how many weeks he's he didn't break be out anything, did he? At, at, Gary, at he didn't point. break anything. He may have a high so, ankle sprain or something like that. Don't think so. But Mario has put a serious this time gag order yes. on everybody about those injuries. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, somebody <laughs> asked him about yeah. that. He's Ooh, about I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, it's been pretty well mandated that nobody in that building is to, is to speak about injuries. But uh, you know, you're talking about the offensive line, and uh, somebody sent me a clip uh, that showed the offensive line on on a quick screen, the Restrepo, that all five offensive linemen were 20, 30 yards downfield blocking on that Ooh, play. I saw that. And it, it showed their athleticism and yeah. that they were down there. Well, to the point you were making, Lamar, the other thing I noticed is so was Texas A&M's defensive line was mm -hmm. 30 yards downfield. Yeah. Too. Like, like, yeah. they're like, they were a real deal group. I mean, mm -hmm. an athletic, all of them were five stars. Uh, so don't anybody try to diminish what happened out there uh, on Saturday at all. Like, you know, that was a decent Texas A&M team that it's going to be fun to see where they go this season yeah. with their own schedule yeah. because they do have weapons and they do have some players. Uh, and, they, and they do have pressure on them. Oh, yeah. yeah. They do. And, and Jimbo, he, Jimbo, 
made some ridiculous statements after the game. <laughs> he said something like, we watered uh, down the field to slow down our speed. What, are we slow? We're just as fast and not faster than them. I didn't no, see anybody get their hands on Rashard Smith. He was talking about that play where his receiver fell down and uh, yeah, Cam, Kinchin, Cam Kinchins intercepted the ball. Um, and, he, you know, he's not wrong. Like, when, when they change out those logos in the middle of the field and they paint. It, it's true. There's some truth to it. There's some so, truth to so the Go on the field before the scary. game and see which cleats you should put on. Don't make an excuse when the game's over. We, they had longer cleats than we had. That's not well, scary. you know, some some things you just have to know. You know, back when back in the day when, when I was playing with the Dolphins and we played at, at Joe Robbie and they had that clay on there, you know, I would run my route all the way to the grass, to the edge of the grass. And I would <laughs> tell Danny, I'm going to take it a little deeper because I would take it to the edge of the grass. Now the DB's in the clay. So he's gonna he's gonna slip, you know. It's just knowing what's what's going on out there, you know. So, but I, I heard that. I heard him say that. I heard, also heard him talk about the the clap. Yes. Uh, it's part of the game, man. If they're gonna go to silent the clap offense, I mean, you take that chance. I mean, that that's so, legal. I mean, there's nothing illegal about well, doing this. Well, if if he was if, trying if he to was get somebody's attention, that's if what he, he was, was trying, trying to get someone's attention. He was a good job of acting, did a great job, and it screwed them up. I mean, but you think about they were doing some stuff. You know, we, we, we were able to do a bunch of stuff, I think, just to confuse them, and especially on that defensive side. I, 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 I really enjoyed watching us play defense. Um, I thought we had them because they got some weapons over there. They, they truly have some weapons, um, some big old receivers, some fast receivers, pretty decent running back who got rocked. Uh, it, it was it was a well played game by the Hurricanes. James Williams was lighting some people up. He was. He was he a was. little close to a lot of uh, some penalties, but he was on the he, edge. He was aggressive. Yes, yes he, looked, he this was. This was his best game, I thought. I thought that was one of his better games, also. So, LT, uh, what did you see Lance Gidry do that was giving Bobby Petrino and Jimbo Fisher? Um, and Cheney was another is another elite offensive coach. Mm -hmm. He was the, the offensive coordinator of Georgia for many years. He's an analyst on that staff. I mean, those are three mm -hmm. considered elite offensive coaches that are coordinating and designing the Texas A&M offense and, and managing game day. What was Lance Gidry doing to screw them up? Again, it goes back to what I said earlier. Uh, Bobby, Coach Petrino, he's He's looking at what he's going to get you to the line. He, he doesn't want you to sub. He's going to get you to the line and wait for you to call or get set in your defense. And once he feels like he has a key to your defense, he's going to call a play, a beater, as we call him, a two beater. If it's cover two, he's going to call a two beater. If he's going to cover three, he's going to call a three beater. A run play, he's going to watch the three technique. He's watching to see where that three technique lines up. Well, Gidry, he just he moved those guys. Yes. They basically baited them into okay. You call the run play. Now we move it to another spot. Now it blocks up. It, it messes up your. So the, you see the offense, offensive lineman. They're pointing at the guy they're blocking, or they're looking at that guy. Now all of a sudden he moves over here. You don't know if the guy to your right is also watching. You know, so it causes confusion at the snap of the ball because they have their keys on who they're supposed to block. But if now that guy that was supposed to be here is over here. Am I still supposed to block him? And does my guy know that I'm going to go over here? Is he going to block this guy? It was a bunch of stuff that they were able to do and disguising their coverages, rolling coverages different ways and then rolling it back, up, going to man to man, looking like his zone, going to man. I mean, it did a beautiful job. I, I yeah, really was and, impressed. And those corner blitzes, that really yes. screwed them up. They didn't know where those guys were coming from. They came from every angle, and they they, they made a few tackles, and they, they rushed the throw a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot. Usually you can use it as an offensive play caller. You can kind of be ready for the corner blitz, especially to the to the boundary, to the short side of the field. So you're always looking for it, watching to see where the defensive end lines up or his first move. If he goes inside, you know that guy's coming because that's his lane. Right. But they did a great job of disguising it. You, you couldn't tell. I was trying to figure out, is he blitzing? Oh, he did blitz. Oh, that was great. I mean, it was, it was great to watch. I was sitting in the end zone going, this is awesome. This is great. 
And you know, they they made some adjustments at halftime and and, yeah. and ran up a lot of yards in the second half. But all in all, just a great performance. And Chris Brown, one of our viewers, he's asking about the offensive line. Were they tired like they were last year at Texas A&M? No and, and at Texas A&M, they were exhausted by the end of that game. I didn't see anybody exhausted at this game. Those guys are fit, conditioned, strong, big, powerful. They remind me of Vernon Carey. The days <laughs> when Vernon Carey was out there playing for the Canes. And, uh, oh, geez, look who's here. Look who's here. <laughs> how you doing, Mr. Carey? Hey, how you doing, sir? I'm so doing Vernon, great. By, by the way, Mr. Carey had a great golf tournament on Monday. It was Thanks awesome out of, out, of, out of Western Hills. I think I, it was probably my best. I think I the best I've played in a while. I just I wish I had been able to finish. I had to leave a couple holes because I had to do daddy daycare things. But, man, I played so good. So the people, they're probably saying to you, man, that Lamar Thomas, he should be in. He's, he's Tiger Woods' nephew or something. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for inviting me, man. You had a chance to watch that game, man. What did you think? Man, I was very impressed with the offensive line. The offensive line is holding their own. Yeah. Um, the last time the offensive line played like that, we were we were competing for championships. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what I was telling Brett the other day when I saw him at the golf tournament and Vince Wolf. I was like, when the old line was protecting like that, and that that quarterback was just having lunch and having breakfast and all type of meals. <laughs> we just had all day to um sit in the pocket and, and get the the ball off. So. You, you know, that's a pat on the back for the offensive line. And, you know, that was against a, a high-ranked team, you know. So, it means a lot. A high-ranked defensive front, too. Yes, yes, yes. They did a great job. A great job. Actually, I think our I think our defensive line were being held a lot, but I didn't see too many flags going up. Oh, they were, man. Those, those SEC officials were bad. Were, were like, they didn't even, like, try to hide the fact that they were trying to influence the game. I, mean, I thought, right I, thought I was watching a version of the WWE, the way they were having choke holds and sleeper <laughs> holds and all this stuff. I'm just, I'm, just so happy, I'm just so happy for the old line to be doing good. That's all, man. Hey, Vernon, let me ask you this. So, Mal and Noah, our right tackle, number 61, the true freshman, he had a couple of holds. Yes. What had, What did you notice, if you noticed, what he was doing? Was he laid out of the stance? What happened? And, yeah, and probably just getting out the stance a little bit, a little um, a step too too late. Um, but you know that that's just rookie mistakes. But that, that he'll 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 get past that. He'll get past that, Vernon. Let me let me ask you this because you know I, again, I always ask the guys that come on the show, not not trying to change the subject, but why why did you come to the University of Miami, man? I, I, I it's a very fascinating to hear the stories of why guys came to the University of Miami. Um. I mean, it's funny. It, like I tell, I tell a lot of people, I went to UM because I wanted UM to be great again. Um, mm. At that time, UM wasn't winning. Um, they had just got blown out by Syracuse. Mm. And I remember going to the boat and I was like, and coming out that year, I think I was the number one offensive lineman in the country. And we just got blown out by Syracuse. I think it was 56 to zero or something or six or something. 66 to Donovan six. McNabb's it was last really year. bad. It was really bad on um, McNabb. Yeah. And then, um, Everybody was like, you still going to UM? I was like, yeah, I'm still going to UM. It ain't about where it is. It's about what we could do to change it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And that's just being around guys like Roland Smith was my my um, football coach at high school. So he used to come pick me up every morning. <laughs> my senior year, he was like, hey, come get in the car, man. I'll take you to school. <laughs> so he was kind of recruiting me every day. And he would wear those rings, them championship rings. Hey, <laughs> Want to put one of them on? I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, he kind of steered me away from um other schools, but I, I, I when I got to UM, I was like, you know, you know what? I get to stay home, mm-hmm. I get to change the program back to where it used to be, and um, you know, we we I remember calling Andre Johnson and Andre Johnson in my class, um, Kevin Beard in my class. We got some big time receivers at that time, and we ended up getting Jason Gathers. He was the number three mm-hmm. overall pick, um, mm-hmm. prospect overall. Mm-hmm. It was just Big dominant, um, big class, you know. And we, what was um, Philip Buchanan mm. playing quarters that year? So it was just, we just, we wanted to be the difference. Mm. Hell, we, you know, we Burton, know, um, still up to the upperclassmen when we came in as a freshman. That's right. I'm, I'm, huh? <laughs> I'm watching yeah, the we, guys we, on the we, team we, now. We stood together, you know, and we had big Brian McKinney. So we had a lot of big guys, but they was like, hey, these freshmen are <laughs> tough. They, but, they ain't playing around. Yeah, yeah. I told, hey, I remember one time, um, Nate Webster tried to cut my eyebrows. I said, hey, from the same place <laughs> you from, don't try me like that. 
We may here. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because after the game the other night, we're seeing guys like James Williams, Xavier Restrepo on social media recruiting some of the elite players from South Florida to come join them. Um, you know, Jeremiah Smith, the, the, the great receiver at Chaminade comes to mind. And uh, they're taking ownership of the program again, the way you guys did, Vern. And, and, and they are recruiting the next generation of kids, helping the coaches yes. uh, saying, Hey, why, you know, why are you going to Ohio state? Did you see our passing game against Texas A&M? Yes, and it kind exactly. of just like feeds on, on itself. Yeah, it feeds on itself, especially when the program start going in the right direction, winning those big games like the other day against Tess and AM on national TV. So, you know, and then they get to send those, those what they call that, junk mail to the kids' <laughs> house and let them know, hey, we just want a big game. Don't you want to be part of the next one? So, you know, that's just our marketing tool. So we need to use it and hopefully we keep winning. You know, you got talk about now. they got junk mail, they got they got email, yeah, okay. they email got, Twitter, they, got tweets, they, got well, yeah, they don't do email no more. Mail, I mean, to, um, well, IG, DM, 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 slide into their DMs. I guess. Wow. Uh, you know, <laughs> you talk about that class that you came in with, like, you know, you said you stood up to the upper class. I, you know, I look back on my class, and it was almost the same thing. It was like. You knew at some point because we were so close that we were going to be great when we got to, yes. to be it, a team, it you know? Like a tight-knit team to really oh, yeah. have a tight bond and everybody real confident in themselves. Yes, yes. And they worked. Yes. You, know, you named some of those names. They were all good players, really great players. Great you know, players. Jason Gallagher is one of We worked it's just as hard we, there you as go. we were good because we were so confident we worked so hard we pushed ourselves so hard and challenged each other so much so so much that when we went to the game we didn't really feel like th those guys we were um we about to play the game against was the same guys is better than the guys we practiced against and they probably weren't <laughs> it wasn't when you go back to lt's year and before that when they were winning it they weren't they weren't it was much easier for the games than it was in the practices so um looking going forward now you saw the offensive line, but the running game was not that good the other day. So um, your thoughts on where this takes us now uh, to get consistency. We have one or two good backups. We can't lose any of these linemen because, as Mario says, we're not that deep yet. Mm -hmm. So what you saw the other day was unity, cohesion, fighting as a unit. I remember Leon was on the show, and Leon would tell us all. These guys have not played one down in the regular season yet. All the names could be great, but it doesn't matter. We've seen two games. That offensive line is in the same space, the same head space, and on the same page, right? Yes, I agree. I agree. They, like I said, they're working as a unit. They're playing good, um, and they're tough. They're scrappy, mm. and they want to do their job. Mm. That's what it really comes down to. They want to do their job and, and, and don't want to let – let the team down by doing their job. Right. And they were very, very physical. Which yes. Is what Mario has preached since the minute he got here. He wants physicality. Yes. Yes. And that's that's been Mario. Mario been that type of guy. Coach, Coach Mario has always been that type of guy. <laughs> well, I, let me ask you this. What, what was the feeling? Because I, I already said what I felt walking out of the stadium. What, what was your feeling walking out of that stadium? I was happy. Like, I'm <laughs> telling you, like, I don't want to be overexcited. That's the thing. Like, people, like, I don't want to jeez them. Right. Because every time I, I be over ha, overconfident and happy and start rallying, then something <laughs> bad. So I'm just like, I'm just, just you're right happy. there. You're happy. You're happy. happy you know, I'm even sound. I'm very cheerful. But I'm right. just. Yeah. You know, going into that game, though, you know, you're, you're just like we were. We want, it was a wait and see. We wanted to see yes. what, what, and then all of a sudden you get the two turnovers, you get the special team blunders. You're like, oh crap. And then they fought their way back. Yep. Yep. And you saw that heart. You saw that 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 championship mentality yes, right. that reminded us of the old, whether it was your class or the class before that or yep. the fight. Because we haven't seen that in a while. We've gotten down and we just put our heads down. Oh, oh, here we, we go again. Here we go again. People start walking out of the stadium. Yep. But they, they had fight. And when I saw that, I was like, okay. So right. it's two things to be good, happy about. They were down with 10 zip or 14 zip. 
and, and 17 and 7. And 17 In the first quarter, they could have said, man, that's the other man start pointing fingers. You know, right. but they just, yep. they just hung in there. They knew why they, they, they messed up one play, you know. So they had their little mess up, you know, flumber. And then now they got back on it. And they execute when they came. They got the second drive and their third drive. You know, they kept yep. executing. Yep, and they well, came back right before the half and they scored. Yeah. So they did a lot of great things. Now, for tomorrow night, in the past, every time we played a game like that, we'd be flat as a board. Mm. I expect tomorrow to not be like that. I don't know, you know who's going to be out because of injuries or nipped up, but I expect the effort to be exactly the same, and I expect to obliterate this team by halftime. The same thing, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I expect – the rest of the season, we're going to play like that. Mm. Uh, hard, physical, I hope in so. your face. The expectations I'm, I'm, are ramped up, guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm ramped up. Every game is going to be dominant. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. U is back. I didn't say that either. I just oh. want to see. We've laid eggs years past. That's the voice for the fan there. <laughs> here, here, here we go with that back. So we, we got to We got to win. We got to consistently. Back. I we got to consistently play like that. That's all. I didn't say we we're going to win every game. I we want to con- play just like that in your face, like we used to. But I'm, I'm proud of those guys, man. Yep. Yeah. They, they, they showed a lot of fight and, and you know, resiliency. I think that those guys should get a get a um, you know, just have a little uh, something on the door saying Middle Tennessee State. Don't forget. <laughs> yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Don't get ahead yeah. of yourself. Don't get too far down the road. Don't start thinking Clemson. Take one game at a time. Get as much playing time as for some of those younger guys to get yep. some more experience. Um, keep the guys healthy. But most of it, just be consistent. You don't yep. want to go out having dumb turnovers, turning the ball over, dumb penalties, all those things that are that are killers. Uh, just be consistent. Play ball and just. You know, do what you're supposed to do. Like Bethune Cookman, you're supposed to win. Yeah. The next did, game, you're supposed to win. Did you so, see, did you see the, our offensive coordinator? The excitement that he had. Every one of those big plays, Dawson was just like so happy, and then he that went like this when um when um what's his, come on, uh, what's his name uh, George at like that last mm-hmm. touchdown. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the the announcers were saying they should just eat the clock. He ain't no clock. He saw a mismatch. He changed the play. Boom, touchdown. That's what I want. And I just love to see the enthusiasm on this guy. It's great to see Miami like this again. It's about time. They, yeah. they stayed aggressive. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They kept their foot on the gas. Well, speaking of foot on the gas, you got a, uh, since I'm getting into this, you got a food truck. That's yes, sir. Damn I, got good. A, um, I got a restaurant too. Rick and, <laughs> and a food see? truck. He got everything. Huh? You gotta say you got everything. Oh, where's, got- the, where's the where's the brick and mortar and where's the food truck hang out? Um the food truck, um, we, we do different catering events. Um we only go out when we're called out. Um the brick and mortar is um seven four six northwest sixty second street in Miami, Florida. Um it's in Liberty City. Um what what I'm doing is providing healthy options and deprived areas. So mm. now we sell salads. It's like a salad bar, but we sell mm. salads. We sell smoothies. Um, we do wraps, amazing wraps. Amazing. Food, like a, 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 a healthy, but clean, but with a taste. Is mm. that it? How's that going, Is that it on your shirt? Yeah, Green Envy, yeah. Yeah, okay. Green Envy, cool. I'm sorry. Wrong. <laughs> How's that concept going? Um, well, it's going really good. It's doing really good. Um, we, get, we do a lot of um, partnerships with a lot of people, a lot of schools and parks and stuff like that we got after school programs so you know just trying to provide healthy options and and introduce a lot of kids to salads and smoothies because when i was growing up we didn't have those type of options so now i'm trying to stay in that line and keep helping my people and hopefully you 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 probably would have been a running back if they had salads back when you were coming up Well, Vernon, man, we appreciate you coming on, man. Again, thank you for inviting me to that golf tournament. What a wonderful day. All right, man. Uh, we'll get you West back out there next year, man. May. We get out there in the summer, man. It's too hot in the summer, man. I got, I'm moving into May next year. It's going right. to be the 15th I'm, year. It's going to be a special one. All right. I'm down. I, I'm in there, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. And I'll see you. You, you going to be there tomorrow? Yes, sir. I'll be there. I'll see you there tomorrow night. Thank you, boss. Appreciate All right, you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Vernon. Great, great seeing you, Vernon. Thank you. Bye-bye. You know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, Lamar, man, Vernon really looks good. And you can oh, yeah. 
you know, like a lot of these former players, you know, they they let themselves go. Their 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 diets are terrible and stuff. They gain a lot of weight when they stop playing. Mm-hmm. Vernon, he's like lean and mean, and <laughs> and and I'm thinking to myself, how is he doing this? Well, there it is. He's well, got it, there envy. it is. He yeah. envies this restaurant. He's the That's right. to date to go. <laughs> he, uh, he he looks good, man. He looks good. Let's see oh. here. Let's read some of these comments Chris, here. Chris Brown wants to know if I was being funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was born born funny, Chris. <laughs> Need to oh, let me ask you back. LT tomorrow. But, yeah. If we're blowing them out or whatever it is, who's coming in next? Jacuri. He needs to get his feet wet. Yeah, that's that, that's interesting. No, well, seriously. If they it, don't it, it put him in tomorrow, I think he's going to have his head down. Well. If, if, if if the game plan, it all depends on their game plan as far as what they want to do with him for the rest of the year. You know, yeah. if you want to red shirt him, then you figure it out. If you don't want to red shirt him, then you probably play him more. I mean, it 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 all it just all depends on what they want, what they're really thinking about, how far Look they at want. Gary cracking work. up. Somebody must have written something. E- I'm laughing. EJ Holden says I'm funny looking. <laughs> <laughs> That's my prime for sure. No, no, no ser- LT, seriously, th- you know what? We can't assume. I don't want to assume. I think it's a mistake that Van Dyke's not going to get hurt. I ha- you have to prepare for the worst. Well, so somebody's got to be ready. Now, if it's, yeah. if it's Williams, it's Williams. Um, but I think they both have to get their feet wet a little more yeah. when they get to that fourth game that they're allowed to play without losing a shirt. But they have to always consider that something could happen. Yeah. They had that last year. And you never it could be a fluky thing. Look at his finger. He hit his finger. But that's what that's what these games are for. Right. They, I know that. And that's what I'm know. saying. Who do you think is coming in if they're blowing them out? He's not playing the whole game if it's a They're going to try to play both. For sure. I think they're going to play both. Yeah. I oh, agree. no doubt. No doubt about it. They got to play both. Um, and then you, whatever your plan is, you, you, you put it in effect. I mean, but you got to play both because you definitely don't want your starter in there too long. Right. I mean, he should be able to, to consistently move the ball. Do what he does. Keep it simple. Uh, don't show too much for, or you can show some things that you're probably not going to run again, right. and have another team have to practice that, <laughs> spend time practicing it. Uh, so there's different ways to go about games like this. Yeah, and um, I think they made look. Shakuri has an opportunity to quiet everybody because still everybody on their mind what he did in the spring game. So he's got to show something better than that. Otherwise, he's probably not going to get in and they'll let the other kid play a lot. And they may have to burn his shirt. It just depends on how we do. But I think Jacuri has a chance tomorrow to at least show that that was a fluke. He's got to be a little I, more. I don't think they bury any shirts. I, I think they redshirt both of these guys if Tyler if stays they, healthy. If they can. If they can, Gary. You have to They're put that to if, if Tyler stays healthy. I mean, there's no reason healthy, they can't. Right. Right. You got four games for each guy to play. If you're talking about late in the fourth quarter, going in just to you know take a knee or hand the ball off or whatever, waste. either one of those guys could go in. You got you could put them in four games each, right. or you could just leave Tyler in the game. So um, I think you could let them both play against Bethune if things go the way they should go, and that could be one game for each of them. It would be Emery's second, second but if right. Emery is the true number two, which I believe he is. Uh, you need him to get reps because mm-hmm. for the reason you say, Bruce. So. Well, if if they're winning big, I would keep Brown in there and not give a second game to Emory Williams because he probably would get in the Temple game. Yeah, but what if you're in Chapel have, Hill in a few weeks? He wanted to play two times in the first three games. Then there's nine games left. He could only play in two. I don't want that. I'd let Corey finish the game tomorrow for beating them. Let him mm-hmm. get the reps. Lamar, you're a coach. Solve this riddle. This, this is a tough one to reconcile. Hey, I'm not a quarterback coach. I'm I'm the receiver coach. <laughs> that, that's a that's a tough one right there. Now you, I mean, I I dealt with having to figure out whether you know we were going to play a receiver or two, and but nothing along the quarterback lines. That's that's entirely different. That's that's big bucks. That's big bucks decisions right there. <laughs> well, you can give an opinion. It's your show. It is my show, but man, I, I'm gonna stay away from that one because I, I I just know both of them should play because I want to see, I want to see the improvement. I want to see some improvement. I want to see consistency. I want to see, like you said about the spring game. I want to see how far you've come. I want to see what this 
other young man. I saw him in the game earlier this year, and he was able to do some good things. I like what I saw, but I want to see it again. So, I but, but I don't. I wouldn't do it tomorrow. That's just my opinion. I would do it next week. Uh, I don't know now. We're not going to lose tomorrow night, Lamar. So we might as well let the other kid play. Listen, I think my number two quarterback is, and we do not know that. We don't know. Quite frankly, whoever my number two quarterback is, I want to see him throw for 200 yards tomorrow night. That'd be nice. And two or three touchdowns and just go out there and execute the offense. Because if I have to put that guy in any game coming up, I want to know that he's at least been on the field. All right. And I'm just thinking if we're blowing them out and then the first, let's say they bring in Ja'Cory and then it's like 56 to seven. You're going to really bring Williams in and let him fling it all over the field? I don't I think so. At that point. Right. That's what I'm saying. I think that could very well be. You don't want to have two of these guys in a blowout. Let the one I, kid I, play. I, I like what Christopher Wright said about them still being, still competing. I think that's uh, I think they're still competing for that spot. You know, uh, and, yeah, they are. Of course they are. But I agree with Gary. I think Williams is the backup. If push came to shove. Especially right now, if he gets hurt tomorrow, God forbid, I think they'd have to bring in Williams because he's played. I don't have anything to do with playing against Miami of Ohio. I just think he, whoever won the job in spring and fall, is should be the number two quarterback. Right. But and they haven't told anybody anything. But I have a feeling it's it's it's. They really don't have to. They don't. Have no, of course to. they don't have to. They don't even tell you who's hurt or how hurt they are. <laughs> they the yeah, they don't do that. Things. They don't do it. You got to figure it out. I, I you know, I, I do want to see um, him, the TVD in there. And again, just be consistent. Right. Uh, I, I think the game plan should be our athletes, our guys are better than your guys. So let those guys do it. You try to get the ball out of his hands as quick as possible. Try to not let him get too many hits. Um, run the ball. You should be able to run the ball because you're going to be bigger. Yes. You know, so you should be able to run the ball, get back to running the ball. That takes a lot of hits away from the quarterback. Then you go to the next quarterback and, and so on and so on. I think we should see um, at least two 100-yard rushers. That's what I'm thinking, at least two. Well, it could be. It could be. I, that, I was very impressed by Allen, even though he had only a few carries. These guys are fighting for every yard. Paris is yes. incredible. You know, last yes. year he did the same thing, but he had nowhere to go. There were no holes. That play that they had the two backs at the same time, and then it was Cheney and then him, and he got the handoff and turned the left corner on first and ten near the end of the game. That's picture perfect. That was so beautiful. And uh, and they're fighting for every inch, and Restrepo fighting for inch, yeah. every inch. You know, I, I sent I sent Restrepo uh, a message just saying how proud I was about. I talked to the kid a couple of times. We we text back and forth and. You know, he wanted to be a leader, and we talked about leadership and what it takes, you know, and uh, he definitely has those qualities. I, I just said, hey, it, it's going to become – if you continue to do what you're supposed to do, it's going to become contagious. All those guys will start doing – working harder, working extra, uh, making plays, running down the field, to, to get in great shape. All that will become contagious, but you have to continue to show those guys because you have that mentality – Yep. That you want to be great, so and, and if you have it, at him yes. the field. it's just it's obvious. He's just yes. so confident. And I yes. and the announcers were talking about yards after the catch, which mm-hmm. I know LT, you're all of them, mm-hmm. Young, Restrepo, Colby, George, not Horton because he caught the pass and kept on going. But you know those guys were just making catches. They weren't just falling on the ground. They were. Going down the Listen to these numbers, LT. All, All right. right, on the on the receivers, Restrepo. Okay, <laughs> Restrepo goes six for 126 in that game. Right. Okay, right. 88 mm-hmm. yards after the catch. That's what I said. I, I mean, I did I don't even know if if if, if Lamar Thomas did did that on a regular yeah. basis. Um, no, it wasn't, wasn't much of that. Col- Colby Young, <laughs> six catches, 75 yards, 52 yards after the catch. Jacoby George, five catches, 94 yards, 70 after the catch. Yeah, to my point. This isn't this isn't last year. No way. Those are amazing numbers, though, Lamar. These are and, and these, still playing really without a tight end who can catch the ball. Yes, and that's what yeah, you know. I've, I've, I've seen I've seen on uh, on the comments a couple people have said about the tight end play. You know, obviously, you know, we, we we're missing 
uh, my man from last year, but somebody's going to have to step up because we're going to need tight ends at some point to to be able to make some plays. Well, they need Arroyo because he could spread the field and stretch it yeah. too. As a tight yeah. end, he can get down the field. Yeah, we're going to yeah. need that. I mean, yeah, but I don't so, far, back. so far we've seen everything except that position, but uh, I'm happy with what I've seen. Um, and, hey, sometimes you might have to just take the tight ends out and go full wide. How about that? <laughs> That's okay. I, I, when, when Arroyo gets back, I think we're going to see plenty of balls going to the tight end. That you know, I think right now the receivers were so hot in that game the other day. There was no reason to even worry about who was getting burned. I mean, they, they were they were just really in a, in a great rhythm. Um, you know, Lamar. Uh, just to jump back to the running backs for a minute, somebody says to me, "These guys are only getting you know nine, ten carries a piece." Uh, you know, Parrish got ten. The Jay mm-hmm. Allen got five. Don Chaney. Mm-hmm. Got three. Mark Fletcher got four before he got hurt. Um, are they going to be able to stay happy uh, sharing the load the, the the way they are? And uh, you know, I thought that was an interesting question because you know I don't see that changing. I mean, these are all guys that can contribute, and it looks like they're committed to mm-hmm. playing them all about evenly. And I think it would have turned out that way had Fletcher not gotten hurt. Um, does winning kind of put all that, all those type of feelings on the back burner? Yeah, I think winning, winning definitely covers up a lot of that. But I think right now, as you look at those guys, they're just hungry. They're just waiting their shot. They're just, you know, if you're saying I'm only going to play, get the ball nine times, I'm going to make the best of those nine times. You know, and the other guys like, okay, if I'm only going to get the ball eight times, I'm going to make the best of those eight times. It's, it's, it kind of reminds me of I'm not, not saying they're great already or not saying the greatness. But it reminds me when they had all that, that backfield with, with uh, Portis and James and all those guys that, you know, you just – once one guy goes out and other guys come in, and you're like, damn, he's just as good as the other guy. Damn, he's just – and they're, they're pretty much different too in a way. So that's a good thing because you can't really sit there and go, okay, well, Fletcher comes in, he's a power back. Well, okay, you think his power, he's going to run by you. You know, your parents come in, you think, oh, well, he's a speed guy, and he will run you over. So there's, there's, there's different you. guys in a way. They all bring something different to the table, but they're all pretty good. And that gives you that good stable of backs. And what, you know, as we talked about before, I told Mario a long time ago, you're not going to be able to compete until you build depth. And when you build depth, then you'll be able to talk championship games, whether it's conference championships or national championships, but that's what made us so good because the guy behind you was just as good and the guy behind him was just as good. So you had to come every day and compete and get better in practice. And that's what it's about. And I think that these guys also know, as opposed to when you're playing with one guy who gets 24 carries and you may get three, Mm -hmm. all of them know, excuse me, all know they're going to get between six and 10 or 12 carries. They know they're not going to sit there for too long. They are getting in the game. And that's part of the difference. They're all on the same page because they all want to win badly. So, And that's that's part of the culture that we're talking about. These kids know they're getting in the game. And there's another guy out there as the voice of the fan that we all want to see. I don't know if we're going to see him this year. And that's Trevante Citizen. He was supposed to be the best of them all. And we haven't seen him yet. I don't think you'll see him this year. I I think they'll let him continue to heal. Right. It's not necessary. Not necessary for him to play. They got plenty of guys plenty uh, of at running back. But, you know, Tim Harris is doing a really good job yeah. of managing the, the load on those guys. Like, if you want to keep somebody from getting upset, let them all play about the same. And if they each have 10 carries, it, it eliminates room for dissension or, yep. you know, hurt, hurt feelings or whatever. And they're all playing well, so they mm-hmm. deserve to play. Now, receivers, Lamar, I don't see the same thing. I see a lot of guys standing on the sidelines at the receiver <laughs> position. Uh, now those starting three are playing great football. Correct. Um, but we're you know we're not seeing Brashard Smith on offense. We're not seeing Ray Ray Joseph on offense. Well, we're, not seeing Robbie, we're not seeing Frank Ladson on offense. We're not seeing much of Michael Redding on offense. Uh, we saw Josh Horton, I think, for one or two plays mm-hmm. the other day. We one of which was a for touchdown. One I mean, how crazy is that? That LT. I mean, he goes out on the field for one play and gets thrown the ball for a touchdown. They must have seen in practice um, that he runs that route really well, and mm-hmm. they put him in there to run that route. I mean, it had to be. Well, um, but sometimes that happens. 
I'm not seeing I'm seeing a lot of guys at receiver mm -hmm. standing on the side. Watch, watch, watch that play on the replay and watch TVD look to his right and then look to his left and find Horton. He did not give that play away. That was really good quarterbacking by him. When you watched it two or three times from the angle from the defensive back towards Vance, you could see him looking the other way, and he just turns and just fired a perfect pass into this kid's hands. So that was just a beautiful, well-designed play. And Love back, back to what you were saying, Gary. I mean, these, these there's there's a lot of depth. There's some there's some good depth now. You know, Lassen and those Lassen had his opportunities last year. Um, you know, but this is a different offense. I think that all those guys. Or we're just waiting there, waiting for their chance. Just like you put him guy in for one play, he makes a play. You know, I, I think that with this new offense, it's not like last year's offense. You know, I think last year's offense was very big tennis. So I guess I guess that's the best way to put it. I mean, you know, I walk in the, the meeting room and I'm watching Michigan football. <laughs> I'm like, when? What a difference in the red zone, what? huh? What's he? Did, where did, did he end up at Maryland? Was it Maryland that he ended up? I have up in? no, I have no idea. But you know, I, I didn't want to say anything. But I'm like, we watching Maryland, and we watching uh, uh Michigan football at Miami because we were watching the cutups. And I was like, man, you better have a great offensive line to do the stuff that they were doing. And obviously, we they, we didn't play the best that we should have played on the offensive line either that like, last year. So this, I think, this is more the the what Mario was looking for and wanted as far as a coordinator. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's so far, so far there's thumbs up yep. in my opinion. So I'm sitting here checking. He's, a, he's at Maryland this year. Yeah, yeah. Maryland. He put up 38 and 38 back to back weeks. Hey man. It's, hey, hey, that's, who, they, who they play? Uh, Towson state and Charlotte. Okay. All right. That's, that's about right. I mean, you're supposed to put up at least at least 38. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not talking bad about the guy. Just no. you know, I mean, I thought Rhett Lassen was better, and he's a head coach, and I he think this guy's better too. So, but know, my God, know. man, when you watch what they were doing on Saturday offensively, and you think back to last year, it's oh like, wow, oh my God. What I mean, let's talk, let's let's talk about the play where they sent the guy in motion. And he stopped before he yeah. got to the tackle and went back the opposite yeah. direction. I mean, I don't think we would have saw that last year. I'm just saying. And the, imagina uh, the imagination was not there in that offense. And, you know, kudos to Shannon Dawson for, for you know, he said that I guess Maribel or somebody saw it. And, Maribel and suggested it. I think they ran it with it. Oregon. And the Kansas City Chiefs ran mm -hmm. a variation of it mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl last yes. year. Yes. Yeah, I think so it's not like he created the play, but the, the, you know, let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Like offensive coordinators get all the credit for everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it, it seems like it's really more about the timing of the mm -hmm. plays than just the plays themselves, right, yeah. Lamar? Yes, it's it's definitely the timing. I mean, they they probably sat there in that box the whole time watching when they sent a motion, watch them rock and roll the coverages, you know, rock it down or rock. You know, and they probably said, okay, let's see what they do in the red zone, send a motion play. I mean, a lot of times you're setting up plays for later. Right. You know, you have these plays already in your head. You just want to see how they react to certain things, and you see it, and you say, okay, let's go back to that. But, I mean, the fact that they practiced that play and it was able to work, I mean, it was beautiful. It was a perfect execution of that play. Uh, I mean, they, they, again – they had a great play on a screen, but he got they, somebody was in out on TVD's face, and he couldn't complete it to Parrish. But he was wide open; he could have ran down the sidelines. But that's another example of the play call. It didn't work, but it was a great call. So, and this guy's got an imagination, and he's involved in the game, and he's not stuck on one thing. And his red zone <laughs> play calling was, was was spectacular as well. We didn't see quarterback sneaks and crap oh, like yeah. that. We didn't see any of that stuff. You know, and we still haven't seen a lot of our plays. Yeah, I'm, ho I'm hoping he has. I'm hoping he has even more stuff in the bag because oh, sure he does. So you're gonna, you know, you're gonna need that North Carolina. Correct. You're gonna need a I lot know. of that in the bag. So far, he's pulled out a couple of things, but I think he's let the athletes. He said, "Okay, we got. 
I think we have good athletes or better athletes than you, so we're going to put them in space and let them do their thing. They throw, they, again, saving the quarterback, throwing a lot of quick screens in the beginning, that first game, coming back, throwing some quick screens, and then going downfield later on. I think it was great. And, and you know, I see where uh, J.D. says he wants to run trick plays against Florida State. Hey, when you start running trick plays, that means you're desperate. Yeah, here's I don't want, I, I don't want to see no trick plays in Florida State. I just want a straight up ass whooping. That's what I want. Right. I want to get it to him. Yep, just run it right at Jared run Verse. It. <laughs> right down his throat. <laughs> right down his throat. There you go. <laughs> let's see what let's see what they do next week against Clemson on the road. Even though Clemson's not that great, let's see what happens. We'll Lamar, find you, out. Did um did you get a chance to spend some time with the 1983 team um last last weekend at their reunion? Yeah, I saw some of them old guys. <laughs> so my wife, my wife, I kept when I saw when I walked to the stadium, I'm like, look at this old freaking 83 guy. Look at these old guys. And my wife was like, uh, you're only like five years removed from them. I'm like, but no, I actually I came in the 87. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Okay. They, okay. I guess I am fine, but I'm different. I'm different. They old. Look at them. Look, they look old. All right. <laughs> and so then they ran on the field. Did you see them running on the field? That was embarrassing. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I was cracking up. They, 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 they go to take that picture at midfield, and I'm looking at like the team photographers out there, the team water boys out there. I think I saw Father Leo out there. I'm not sure. I'm like, would you guys get out of the picture? These guys won the national championship. Would you let them take a picture at midfield? Like, man, it was like a free-for-all. I was saying, when they ran out, I said, oh, my God, they got to get some oxygen for those guys. (laughs) Can't take those damn pictures. Half of them were walking. I mean, they, they old. That's what I kept saying. They old. Congratulations, guys. I won that championship reign yeah. 100 years ago. My wife had to keep reminding me, you're only five years removed from those guys. I'm like, Did but you I watch don't. that game live, LT, or no? Live. Live. Did you watch it? I was there. Oh, yeah. there from back in 83? All right. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I, I, but, I, but I was a, I hate to admit it, but I was, I was a Gator fan back then, man. You know, just saying. But you came down for the game? You came down from Gainesville? I came down. I mean, I, 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 let me tell you something. I was such a big Gator fan up until probably 31 4. You know what happened? Remember 31 4? Yeah. The two, the two snaps that Willis Pagese put. Willis Snap. Willis over, over day. Day. That yeah. day, I said, uh oh, I think <laughs> I might be a Hurricane fan. That was a hot day in the Orange Bowl. Yep. Emmett, Emmett Smith's first game. And I said, "Wow, this is something else. This is this is this is different. This is not Gainesville. This is Miami." Did you root for Did you root for Nebraska because you were not a Miami fan, or did you root for the Canes? Because because you said you were a Gator fan. Uh, yeah, I probably was not rooting for Miami. I mean, I you know, Uh-oh. I mean, I, I wasn't. I was a Gator fan. Gators, Gators didn't like the, the Hurricanes like that. But that night in the Orange Bowl was as magical as anything you could ever see in sports. Yes, and was. when you were watching that, Lamar, did you ever feel like I'm going to be out here as, as part of this one day? No, nah, no. Nah, I, 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 like, I, well, I, 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 yeah, I was 13, 13. And um, I just remember, you know, that that play where the, they, they tipped the ball and, you know, Miami won. I'm like, dang, Miami won. And the dude with the pipe and – you know, I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. But the Gators, will, the Gators will beat that butt. That's what I was thinking back then. <laughs> <I guess laughs> back <not>. then, <laughs> they did beat them in the first game, by the way. They did. Three, three they beat them. They, in Tampa, I think, right? Yeah, was it? Tampa was the next. Was the yeah, next. Tampa was next. Okay, okay. That one was in Gainesville. That was the one that uh, Kosar threw. Got 14 points in the last 30 seconds. It seemed like the one up in. in, 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 in you know, we go back to Gainesville next year, right? Oh yeah. boy, uh, oh that's boy, that's fun. that that's always fun. That, that was the last time. Well, I think uh, number thirty six took an interception back for a touchdown. That was that was beautiful. What, what that was? Yeah, that was the last time they played up there, right? <laughs> I think. Uh, no, they played up there when Tim Tebow was there. Yeah, but it was um, what's his name? Number thirty six. Uh, the safety for us. Like, no, not Benny. No, uh-uh. uh-uh. um, it was the last time we played. 
It was uh, number 30. I can't think of his name because I always call him 36. A uh, little short safety. He took an interception back almost 98 yards. They, the last time we played up oh, there, the Gators. Uh, Sykes? Yes, Murray Sykes. Yes. Sykes. That was a great play. Yeah, that, see, oh, everybody's right. Murray Sykes. That, that had to be the most fitting play to me because I'm like, I never got a chance to play against the Gators, but number 36 basically iced the game. <laughs> I was excited about that. I get I got the biggest hug ever. Hey, so LT, so it's it's the second game of the season. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's all euphoric, beat Texas AM, it's all great. But this can't be close to what this team potential is at this point of the season. Like that wasn't a peaked football team that was out there on Saturday beating Texas A and M. So when you're watching it. Uh, mm -hmm. through the lens of a, of, of, of a former player and a coach, where can this team get better? You got to continue to be consistent. I've said that all, you know, since we started the show tonight, you got to continue to be consistent. I think that's one of the things that's hurt this program hasn't been any consistency. Um, you know, special teams, you know, you love to see them um, to not have those blunders. Uh, but I think, on the offensive and defensive side, whatever game plans they put together, those kids went out and executed it. And um, if they continue to put together game plans like that, uh, we have a chance to be pretty damn good. Uh, but the, the kids have to continue to believe and they have to continue to, to, to strive in that culture, which Mario is now trying to create, which, you, you know, like you talked about earlier, Bruce, you got to have that culture of, it doesn't matter. You get, you score 10 points, we're going to score 20, you know, yeah. and that, what that hasn't been the culture. It's all been about, you know, we get down, everybody put their head down, you know, what was me? I'm transferring and all this other stuff, right. but it just looks like a whole different team. Um, what I, as I watch, I watch the sidelines too, because I'm just, I just want to pan and look down the sideline when we were down 10, I didn't see the same yeah. that I saw. Before. Oh no! You Tyler know, Van Dyke said they would have quit last yeah. year. Yes, yeah. there there's was no, no doubt. Panic at all there's, on that. There's plan. no doubt about it. Well, there's, Dawson said on an interview that they all these kids bought in on the offense. They're all in, and that's what you need. You need all of them in on the other side of the ball too, obviously, especially right. on defense because it's like you know you're not dictating what's happening. Um, but still, I, I just thought that that this whole team is rallying around. Mario, the city, and everything else because they need they know they want to win. They need to win. And I think the pressure's off now until we get to North Carolina. And I don't think they're that great either. They almost lost to App State, who's not bad. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out. They go to Pittsburgh next week. Right. And mm -hmm. they're not that great. We'll Man, see. I, I, again, though, I, I haven't felt this good about a Hurricane football team Probably since Coach Rick, you know. I mean, when they're ten and two, when they're ten and two, I mean, I, 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 I yeah, but I mean, when they're ten and zero, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm sitting there saying, man, I'm, a, I think I was at Kentucky, and I'm following along just, <laughs> just like, right. you know. Well, let's put this up on the screen. JD Carmona says Miami has a chance to go twelve and one. Okay. We'll take it. We'll take 12-1 yeah, we'll right now. But, um, you know, getting back to that subject of where they can get better, I, I think T-Dog is on to something here. Mm -hmm. um, the defensive ends getting home, uh, they got a lot of pressure on mm -hmm. the quarterback Saturday, but it was through the blitz, Lamar. Yeah. Uh, they were bringing it from from the perimeter, mm -hmm. the, the corner blitzes, mm -hmm. and, and that's where they were doing the most damage. Uh, they weren't doing it through a tra traditional four-man rush. Can Now that people are seeing this and there's tape for mm -hmm. opponents that are going to be preparing for them moving forward, can they continue to rely on the blitz to get pressure? Or at some point, do these defensive linemen um, need to be able to four-man rush? Well, you want definitely for guys to be able to get there on the four-man rush because that, that takes a lot of pressure off you calling those defensive blitzes because, as we well know, in that blitz, you're pretty much man-to-man -man unless you zone blitz. But in man-to-man, -man, if the guy misses a tackle or blows the coverage, it's a touchdown. So you want 
to be able to get home with the four man line. The thing that I'm most impressed about as I'm watching, we actually had contained. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. we had contained in a minute. I mean, hell, I was impressed that the quarterback tried to get outside and he can't get outside because guess what? Guys are staying home doing their job. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jason Taylor. Thank you, JT. I appreciate it. Wait, is he, <laughs> is he into the game or what? He's on the side with the headphones and he's so into it. It's so good to see a guy like that, just not like be a figurehead. He's there for a reason and he's, he's working good. hard. He he's is working, working hard. hard and he's excited about it. He's yes, he truly is. excited about the opportunity he has and, uh, you know, he. He's doing a good job so far. All of them are. I, I got to give kudos to their coaching staff, the, the staff that he's put together. It seems like they're they're on the same page. It seems like they actually enjoy coaching together, and that's important. Yeah. I, I worry about the D-line still. I still didn't see much from Taylor, and everybody keeps thinking I'm putting him down all the time. He was involved in one play. Well, uh, you get he had a tackle. I think he only had one tackle in the game. Well, and, you remember. I don't know if he's double teamed, but if he is, that should make our ends get up the field a lot faster. Well, remember, you got to also give the other team credit too. Now, some you know they had a pretty decent offensive line, big yeah, boys up there. They had a and massive so, offensive yeah, line. Yeah. Announcers kept on saying they were actually man for man bigger than the NFL yes. offensive line. Yes. So you have to that that is true. Yes. I get that. Now the rest yes. of the teams won't be stacked on the offensive line like that. So mm -mm. that's that'll help. But they didn't give up. They never quit. No. No, as long as they were doing their job. Yes, they were. I mean, it had some blow-ups. The touchdown that the kid went through, like a knife through, hot knife through butter. He had like a twelve-yard <laughs> run. Um, that happens. That, that's a that player happens. pass. That, that reminded me of the pass when he went in untouched. <laughs> Let's see. Chris, Chris Brown says we're at the tippity top and only halfway there. Um, just getting started, uh, which is kind of like I was talking about when you're in the second game of the season. Uh, you should have a lot of getting better uh, left to do. And, you know, you think back to that 2017 season when we were talking about uh, mm -hmm. that team, it hit a wall at a certain point late in the year. But as the year went on, it got progressively better. And, and to the point where they could go to Florida State and and Coach Rick could, could have Malik Razier, you know, hit mm -hmm. Daryl Langham uh, yeah. on the sideline. One of the most beautiful plays you know, oh, you'll ever man. see and, and, and pull out a game like that. Uh, so this team should be the same. Like they should progressively get better. Well, you, you would hope and you want that because obviously as the schedule goes, it gets a little tougher. It's not, uh, you know, the, the great thing about it, you have a semi, I, I wouldn't even say semi. I think that was a good test. That was a really good test. I'm thinking that team is going to be better than decent Texas A&M uh, with that coaching staff and those players. They should be an eight to nine, maybe nine game, you know, nine, maybe 10, nine, 10 win uh, season. And then, you know, we, we, we play um, Clemson at some point. We play Florida State at some point. I mean, these are, these are teams that I don't know if Clemson is the same Clemson, but I know Florida State is not the same Florida State. So, you know, you, you got you to gotta get better and get ready for those games uh, down the way. And, you know, again, you got to be consistent the whole year. You know, that's what it's about. I, I'm disappointed in one of the guys who I Ooh. thought was starting corner the entire offseason, Devontae Brown, and he got beat twice and mm. never turned around and looked at the ball. He had two pass interferences. One he climbed on the guy's shoulder and the one near the end zone where he just pushed the guy before the ball came in. Now, that's a little scary. He's got the length, but I don't know about, you know, putting him in in clutch situation. And he's not starting anymore. He wasn't the starter. Right. Well, those are things that are definitely going to be worked out in practice. Yeah. <laughs> and, it was very noticeable. And when, but when you have guys depth, as we talk about guys behind them that can beat them out, that only makes that kid better because he's going to come back and say, "Okay, I know I got to compete now." Okay, sure. you took, I took, I, I lost my starting position. How do I get it back? That's going to practice every day, putting that uh, lunch pail, and 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 going to work. You know, and, and just getting better, competing. You know, they, they really didn't have any busted plays on defense. The one nope. fullback who caught the ball out of the backfield, uh, I think maybe Malinoa slipped or something like that. And then the run up the middle by by their running back. But I don't. We didn't get beat deep, did we? I we thought the corner. Deep. I thought I thought our corners played against that offense and those weapons. I thought they played. I give them a, a, a an A. I, yeah, I give them and, a. They, and they tackled. And they tackle. 
Terrible. We, haven't seen, we haven't seen that. We haven't seen that in years. Years, right? Years, not just one year. Years. We have been tackling to a bad angles. I didn't see that. They look really good. Well, the um, the last time there was this kind of hope uh, for Miami football was 2017 when uh, Mark Richt was the head coach, and uh, he's got a special night ahead of him tomorrow night. They're they're gonna um, be honoring him at Hard Rock Stadium. Oh, good. Uh, he is an electee for the College Football Hall of Fame. And uh, tomorrow night, uh, Mark's going to be at the game and uh, be announced to the crowd and and have his moment. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a, a fantastic thing to see. He's um, he's coming on the show, and I see him in the lobby, yeah. but I do not – I don't see a camera. So I'm going to take a shot here. Um, he, he's in the stream. He really helped turn this thing around. He went in there and said, I want this and I want that. And it started. Of course, you know. I believe he's with us audio only. Um, uh, Coach Rick, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't have the I don't have the, the video, but I do have the audio. I'm in a parking deck, so hopefully I don't lose you. <laughs> if I do, I'll ride out and uh, get on some good air. That's all right, Coach. That's all right, Coach. We, we, we appreciate you taking the time. And congratulations, Coach. Yep. There you go. I'm sorry, can you say it again? I said, that's okay, Coach. We, we just want to say congratulations. And we, we, tomorrow is a big day for you. 18 years. Of coach. Eight yeah, years I'm excited. Coach. I'm excited. Uh, 18 years as head coach, obviously. 15 years as an assistant coach at Florida State as well. So 35 years altogether when you add it all up. It's well deserved. Well, Coach, I tell you this. We, we want to thank you. Because we still believe you have turned this whole thing around. With your, your, your choices as far as, you know, making sure that coaches are, are not just here on a one-year deal, uh, saying, that, hey, we need more here. You know, we, we got, the, pro, the, the school has to do more for the program. I think you, you, you're the guy that turned this whole thing around. That's, that's just my opinion. Well, I mean, truthfully, there was a lot of heavy lifting when I got there. It's a lot of things. I think I think we all know that Miami was so great for so long without doing anything mm -hmm. uh, to enhance coaches' salaries or facilities or, you know, even take care of the players on the cost of attendance back in that day. Mm -hmm. You know, Miami wasn't doing everything that they could do within the rules to make it a great place again. And and I think, you know, part of the reason why they hired me was because they thought I could help them navigate that. And, of course, you know, getting the indoor facility built mm -hmm. was huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it was just uh, – it was so hard. I mean, every day as a head coach, the last thing you want to do is have to look at the weather forecast mm. and pray <laughs> that the lightning doesn't strike. Yeah. So you have to go inside in the gym and try to get some kind of practice. So once we, once that indoor was finished, it not only uh, was very functional, but it was a sign for recruits to see that Miami was serious about making a commitment to football again. And of course, it's gone uh, through the roof now, from what I understand. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm happy for Miami because of that. Well, well, coach, you you actually put your money where your mouth is. You 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 gave some of your own money to the program. Yeah, the, and with the indoor facility, I knew it's going to take uh, a lot of money. Of course, the Sofer family was so generous yeah. uh, with their with their major gift, but mm -hmm. then we needed a lot of other gifts that were, you know, semi major. And uh, I, I tried to lead the way and let them know how important it was to me as head coach, but also how important it was to me as a former player mm -hmm. at the at the U. I mean, we we needed that indoor desperately, and uh, I felt like it was worth giving our money towards it. Well, did you, what did you think of the game Saturday, Coach? Well, I, I got to see most of it. I didn't see all of it. I, of course, I'm on the ACC network, and right. you're trying to watch. Because I'm a studio <laughs> analyst, I'm trying to watch all the games <laughs> at the same time, but had a special interest in the Miami game, of course. And, uh, you know, I, I felt like Miami up front overall – uh, took care of business. Um, I, I think that some of the w w biggest reasons why the SEC has been dominant 
conf- a dominant conference because their big men are just better than other people's big mm-hmm. men. But, you know, Miami's big men came through mm-hmm. and uh, created some space for the runners and time and space for Tyler to do his thing. And, of course, Tyler was, uh, I thought, spectacular, especially that last drive before the half. I mean, the pinpoint passes that he made. And, you know, a coaching decision to call timeout to make sure there was some time left on the clock when they got the ball. It was um, just a great job all the way around. Hey, Coach, I got a question for you. We, we were talking earlier about the fact that Miami has all these backs. They have about four, maybe four or five backs. Right. You, you had – I coached against you in the belt bowl when you were at Georgia when I was at Louisville, and you had – Tony Michelle and Chubb. How did you? Na- I mean, how did how, how did that work? <laughs> well, I I think kids nowadays understand that they don't really want to be the guy carrying it 30, 30 35 times a game, mm-hmm. like back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, they understand that you know you could get half the carries and still uh, you know obviously stay more healthy, mm-hmm. stay fresher, but also you know. In 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 long elongate your your career, you know you only get so many hits with that body, and uh, the one thing about a running back, everybody wants a piece of that guy, and, and the better you are at breaking tackles, mm-hmm. the more contact you're gonna get on any given play. I mean, if you go down with the first tackler, you get hit once, but if you're breaking tackles, you might get hit five times. That's right. But, but uh, so I think kids, at least Sony Michelle. And Nick Chubb knew they could share the totes. And, and of course, uh, I had taught, well, actually I had Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall mm-hmm. uh, during that time frame, too. At one time, we had all four of them. God. They kind of crossed over. But uh, the, the, all those kids had great careers, and all those kids made it to the NFL. So they, they understand nowadays, I think, it's not that healthy to be the, the one guy that's going to carry the ball over and over and over. Because you're just going to get flat, beat up, and worn out. Mm-hmm. And you won't hey, be in the game for the next level. Amen. Hey, Mark, I've, I've had the dual pleasure of watching your playing career as a fellow student at the time uh, back at the U. And, of course, seeing your entire coaching career uh, from start to finish. And uh, remembering the days when you were a young assistant under Bobby Bowden at Florida State and then obviously went on to Georgia. It's got to be such an incredible feeling for you now at this stage of your life to uh, be chosen to be a hall of famer uh and 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 just like put the icing on the cake so to speak yeah it's a blessing and you know when you when you're in it you're just grinding you're just going you don't think much about it you don't even look up in the stands and realize what an awesome opportunity you have to to play in front of crowds like that and in front of television audiences like that but when you're when you when you're out of it and you can start to look back at the uh, just the, the honor and privilege to, to coach a sport like college football. It, it's pretty humbling. And it's also uh, – you also get a chance to look back at some of the greatest memories that you make mm. with, the, with your players and with your coaches. And, you know, like I'll be honest with you, you know, that Miami-Notre Dame game we had in 2017 mm. – I probably I probably go back and watch that three times a year. <laughs> you know that, that was, but you know when the game's going on, you don't think much about it. Right, right. You're, you're just thinking and making decisions and all that stuff. But when you can separate yourself a little bit with time and space, and then just watch it and just see how awesome it was, mm-hmm. uh, it was it was just uh, quite a quite an honor and privilege to do that. Now, coach. Th- th- you coaching with Coach Bowden. What what did you pull from from coaching with him? What what did you pull from him? Right. Oh, what did I learn from him? Yeah. What did you pull? Yeah. What did you learn from coaching with Coach well, Bowden? Well, you know, I I found out a couple things. Number one, I played under Howard Schnellenberger. And Coach Schnellenberger obviously was a Bear Bryant protege, mm-hmm. uh, kind of my way of the highway guy, mm-hmm. the guy, very intimidating figure, mm-hmm. and uh, he kind of coached through intimidation and fear a little bit, mm-hmm. which is very effective. Don't get me wrong. It can be. And you need you need that with with young guys sometimes, you know. Right. But then I go see Coach Bowden. Well, he, he's completely opposite style. 
you know, he, he's, he's coaching through uh, love and compassion. And, mm. you know, he's the kind of guy that everybody wanted him to win as much as they wanted themselves to win. Mm -hmm. And so when I first got there, I'm thinking, well, there ain't no way we could be successful this way. <laughs> sure enough, you know, win a couple of national championships and play for about three or four other ones. You realize, you know what? You could do it this way or you could do it that way. But the main thing, and Coach Bowen would always say, be who you are. Don't try to be somebody you're not because mm. it takes too much energy and the, and the kids will – Kids will find you out, you know. If you're yep. not genuine, those kids know it. Yep. And uh, if you're an excitable guy, be excited. If you're a calm by calm guy, be calm. You know. If, if you motivate this way, you know, do it that way. Don't don't try to be somebody you're not. And and that's one of the biggest things I learned from Coach Bowden. Besides him leading me to Christ in 1986, mm -hmm. that was that was pretty big too. Wow. And then you go to Georgia, and what were you? A combination, or were you more like like? Uh, like well, the thing of it was, uh, of course, I was 15 years at Florida State till uh, the 2000 season. 2001 was my first year at Georgia, and so a lot of guys, by the time they become head coach, they may have been to five, six, seven different colleges, and so they got to sit there and go, "Well, I'll take a little bit of this place, a little bit of that place." You know, I like that. I like I didn't like this. You know, so they're trying to pick and choose what philosophy they like the best. Well, for me, I was I was really at one place. And that's <laughs> Florida State under Coach Bowden yeah. for those 15 years. So when I started out, that's really what I knew and what I believed in, what I had seen be successful before. And Coach Bowden's personality was more, or my personality was more like Coach Bowden's than it was Coach Schnellenberger's. Mm. And so... You know, quite frankly, we did everything the Florida State way. We did everything the Bobby Bowden way <laughs> when I first got started. And then over time, you know, you have to adapt to what's happening. And just like, I mean, my gosh, college football the last five years, we know how much change there's been. So you got you to gotta change with the times or you get, you get left behind. But as far as a starting point, you know, it was pretty much the things that we did at Florida State that were successful – were the things that we tried to accomplish at Georgia. You had some darn good teams, Coach. Uh, I, I know I know you didn't get all the way to the top, but you had some damn good teams that we all got to see over the years. Yeah, we, awesome. we did. We had, we had some good teams for sure and some good people. And, you know, we were a game away. And, and I think, you know, people will go back and say if there was a four-team playoff, you mm -hmm. know, back in 2000, you know, we might have made it to three or four college football playoffs, you know. So, you know, whether we would or wouldn't have is, is up for debate. But more than likely we had, you know, at least three, four, five teams that were good enough to be in the playoff at the end. Yep. And now they're going for a three-peat. I know. It's amazing <laughs> what they've done. It's been uh, – Three-peat college football. Hey, I know hey Mark, you um, you you sound great. You you you, uh, you sound like a guy that hasn't had to deal with NIL and the transfer portal for the last. Few years. <laughs> That's for sure. Quite, quite, quite honestly, how how's everything going for you? Are you still yeah. enjoying the television work? Yeah, I enjoy it. It's it's a lot of fun. I mean, Eric McLean, the lineman from Clemson, and EJ Manuel, the quarterback from Florida State. You know, working with those guys is fun. Eddie Royal, you know, Virginia Tech guy. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the old sage, you know, and uh, I guess they got to have one of those on the show. But it's it, it is fun because it's it is teamwork and uh, you get to keep your hand in the game. But, you know, overall, uh, it, you, you still get your blood pumping a little bit. Yeah. Anytime you go live TV, you know, you got to be you get a little bit of juice. But uh, it's been fun. And, you know a lot of these guys are trying to make a career of it and I'm truthfully just trying to have a good time with it. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't take myself too seriously on TV, but, but it's fun. Hey, you're going to the hall of fame tomorrow night. Oh, that's goodness. an accomplishment. That's a career accomplishment coach. Well, well, yeah, well it deserved. Was, it was very um, humbling when we got the, the, they send a football to your house with the note and the ball is, you know, painted up real nice and all that. But 
they basically say welcome to the club wow and say something like less than one percent of all coaches since the beginning of college football have entered the hall of fame and you know it's 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 uh you know like i said it and it's a you know welcome to the club so you know my wife and i really you know got emotional at that time because we've poured so much into it mm-hmm. and to be uh, recognized in that way is a huge blessing well i can tell you this coach i i i got a chance to talk to you for a little bit up in uh you and you and your wife up at the bowl game um when we were playing you guys in the belt bowl i was very impressed when i walked away from that conversation you know obviously coaching with coach petrino and then talking to you it was night and day <laughs> imagine that <laughs> it's like mickey andrews <laughs> and bobby bounce <laughs> that's right that's right well, Coach, man, we just wanted to say congratulations and thank you so much for coming on the show. Hope you had a great dinner tonight. And I hope that you, you, you told my guy I said hello, right? You told him I said hello? Of course. <laughs> of course. Well, thank you. Thank you, for com- thank you for coming on, Coach, and uh, enjoy your night. And we'll see you tomorrow. All right. God bless you guys. You thank too, you, Coach. Bro. Thank you very much. Uh, wow. Mark Richt. Um, it's hard to not. It's hard to dislike that guy. I, oh, he. I don't he, care what he happens here. You know, the hardest thing. Yeah, he's a good guy. With Mark, with Mark Richt, for, you know, was watching the the way that last season went. Yeah. You know, how, how frustrating it was, and um, nobody knew at the time that he was sick and that he yeah. and, and that he was fighting. I don't even like, I don't know if he really knew everything that was going on. And um, it was, it was so difficult for him. And it's, it's so great that now he gets to go into the hall of fame yeah. because that's what he'll be remembered by. And, yeah. yes. you, you know, not, not a tough moment at the end where, you know, things just didn't go well that last year. And, um, you know, you, you couldn't be happier for him. He is one of the finer human beings you will ever meet in your life. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm Definitely. telling you, walking away from that conversation with him, and I was just like, because I had never really talked to him. And we stood there and talked for like 30 minutes. You know, my wife, his wife, and in the ballroom uh, at the bowl game, and it was just very impressive to, to talk to him. And, you you know, again, um, you know, you talk about the Bobby Bowden effect. You know, here's a man that, that um, you know, the guys that coached and played under him, you know, kind of emulate him as far as really caring and really wanting to see people do well afterwards. Mm-hmm. That's what I always look at it. When you talk Bobby Bowden and you talk Mark Rick, I think about how those guys, those guys that played for him, he wanted them to do better after the game was over, just like Coach Bowden did. Right. You know, it's funny. You look at him. He said 15 years at Florida State. That doesn't happen anymore. Somebody no. on a team like that, a winning team, and he's no. a coordinator, he's no. out of there after two or three years at the most. So when he said that, I realized, yeah, that is true. He was there 15 yeah. years. I mean, they had some damn good teams, and they won some yeah. titles. But still, yeah. that's very rare, and I don't think that happens much anymore. No, not not real coordinator. All right, LT, let's take a moment and, and take care of some business because I've got Canesware behind me. You're inside Canesware. Uh, the headquarters for everybody to get all their Canes merchandise. Um, you know, you got some beautiful shirts on the rack there. I got it too, um, but I can't put it on the wall yet. Hey, you think I should? Wear, you think I should wear this tomorrow? That's no, one hundred percent. You might what get you one. What do you think? You think I should wear this tomorrow? I don't know. I like this. <laughs> I gotta find. I gotta find the shirt I had on. You go. You gonna do a read there? I gotta find that shirt that I had well, on. While you find that shirt, I'm gonna show everybody the new Canesware commercial. Yeah. Oh, oh they got a new one. Oh. Welcome, Welcome to Canesware. Canesware. New store, new items, same great experience. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has the latest merchandise from the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers, Inner Miami CF, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of 595, or online at canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. Oh, man. Okay, so this shirt right here, I wore this to the game. 
People ask me where did I get it from. But most importantly, the players, the old school players that I played with, this was our this is our training shirt. They had the speed, power, and strength. It was they were tank top back in the day. So when all those guys saw this shirt, they're like, "Oh man, that's taking me back to Coach Roll." You know, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a it's a great shirt, man. It's it's uh they wow yeah. this 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 is what we wore. It was a tank top back in the day to work out with this speed, power, and strength. So come on in wow. here, and you want an old school cane to, to stop you in the street with his shirt. Because he's going to say something like, oh, we used to wear that back in the day. Let, let, here, okay, here's the tank. Well, we had the black, black tank top. Oh, wow, those are nice. Um, uh, it was one picture that was made kind of famous with Sap and all those guys uh, on the practice field. They had these shirts on. So they have them in here along with the rest of the stuff with all the messy stuff and the dolphin stuff and the uh, who else? The Heat stuff. I mean, they got it all in here. Am I missing somebody? The Panthers made it to the, the final. Panthers. Oh, I mean, <laughs> can't forget the Panthers. <laughs> you hear but, but they have the largest selection of Miami Hurricanes gear anywhere. Uh, really, the biggest cane store that's ever been created. T-shirts, jerseys, polos, hoodies, hats, flags, decals, magnets for men, women, Stop. kids. They, they even got here. stuff yeah. at Canes wear for your pets. Like you can, yeah. you can outfit your dogs and stuff. Socks, you got all kind of stuff in here, man. This I is, can, I, I can imagine some people in the Lamar Thomas household might like those socks. Um, Hockey pucks. Oh wow, look at that! <laughs> Hockey pucks, Stanley yeah, Cup final, Stanley Cup finals. Uh, if you're if you're looking to tailgate. Get some ponchos. Hopefully, you will not need the ring poncho that Lamar just held up. Uh, but you can get your tents and chairs at Kane's Wear as well. What is that? Oh, orange wow. bowl. That's an orange bowl replica. There wow. it is right there. The, the old lady herself. There oh, she that is. is. That is very cool. That's cool. But anyways, um, so the store is at 2655 South University Drive. It's right down the plaza from their old store that used to be there. If you're not in South Florida, you could go, obviously, 24 hours a day to caneswear.com. Uh, the greatest selection of Canes merchandise available anywhere today, uh, without a doubt, maybe anywhere in history. So 2655 South University Drive, caneswear.com. Uh, make sure you give them a look, a visit. Tell them Lamar sent you. And, <laughs> right. Uh, hey, I, I told the people next door that they should advertise on the show. Who, I, got a, that, I, got a, I got a sub. I got a sub for you. Yeah. Was it good? I've been, been going there for. Yeah, I talked to them. I talked to him. I talked to him. I ate there and I talked to him. I got here earlier tonight. Next time I get here, early, I'm going over to have a couple words with him. I need to be eating during the show. The show yeah, is good yeah, unless yeah. I'm eating. Yeah. You know no, your, I mean? your mother will be mad at you if you do that anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, my yeah. dad. Now you know chicken wings. <laughs> oh, chicken right. wings. So for the next few minutes, let's stir it up here. Okay. I'm, gonna, right. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put my troublemaker hat on and I'm gonna okay. stir it up. That's yeah, usually my job. And I'm gonna throw this up on the screen from the mob. The mob, Anthony Manzano, the, the head of the mob. Okay. He says that Gary Lamar and Bruce. Do we find it hilarious that Jimbo, of all people, was complaining that the referees were missing calls? Lamar, I'm going to be blunt, okay? It's your show. You're going to have to comment. I'm going to be blunt. Okay. They, they didn't even, like, hide it, man. <laughs> it, 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 it's like it, it wasn't even under disguise. I yep. was like, oh, my God. These SEC refs have come down here, and they are – Blatantly trying to influence this football game, LT. We should be beyond that silliness in college football at this point in time. Uh, you know, these interconference games do not determine a whole heck of a lot. You still have your conference schedules ahead uh, mm -hmm. to determine your fate for bowl games or, or getting into uh, you know consideration for the playoff or, or those kind of things. Like Lamar, like some of those calls the other night. Mm -hmm. We're like un unbelievable in the timing of them, uh, or lack of a call, and in the uh, in, on the flip side, the lack of a call. Yes, the lack. Mm -hmm. 
what were you thinking watching that as a guy that's played and coached? Uh, you know, when when I found out I was SEC refs, I I just you know I, I coached in the SEC, so I kind of know what's what's going on. Everything on. gets. I mean, it is what it is, man. You, Kentucky ain't beating Georgia. If no. it, if it comes down to Georgia not being able to make a national championship, that, it ain't happening. You know, it, 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 I mean, that's just, the truth. They were in a tight squeeze, or somehow they get lucky and they score in the last minute of the game and they win. Nah. But you know happen. what? Despite the it, fact it, that that's what he's claiming, Miami put up forty-eight points. They did. It, 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 so, so, some of those plays, they would have been sixty points. So, so just think. You know, if Miami, and now we don't know, we don't know, but maybe it woke woke Miami up to be down. But just think, without those points in the beginning, it might it might it could have been a blowout. Right, it could have been you a know. blowout. Right, it could have been a blowout. Miami wasn't we scored, we scored them forty-one to sixteen. Forty-one to sixteen, we outscored in the last three quarters of the game. That's not a close game. I, I didn't think we were going to put up forty-one, but. It no, could have been worse. But we're 17, 48. 48. It, it could have. It could have been worse. Could have been worse. worse. Could yeah. have been worse. I even yeah, thought. I mean, listen. And then one pass that Restrepo got in the first quarter, where he had the first down, and hit him high. I thought he got yeah. interfered with from behind. They didn't call it. I'm they, surprised our fans didn't start chanting SEC because that usually goes on when the SEC team comes in and uh, a non-SEC team beats them. The crowd starts chanting SEC, but our crowd, they're not into all that. Yeah, I don't know if everybody realized those were SEC refs. I really don't. Right. Because they would have been chanting a lot of things had they realized <laughs> what, was, what was going on out there. But, you know, I give the Canes a lot of credit. They didn't flinch. Nope. You know, Mario yelled a little bit at those guys, but mm -hmm. as he should as he should have been. But nobody flinched. All right, fine. You're giving us a, uh, you're giving us a 10-yard penalty, 15-yard penalty. Okay, no problem. Let's we'll, go. We'll come. Let's yeah. go. Let's, let's, let's go. go. And, you know, and, and I think that these guys, we talked about it last year. Somebody's, you just can't catch um, punts inside this eight or nine. If you got to let it roll. Yeah, I mean, those, 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 so those are hard. mistakes. What? Those are mistakes. Those, those are, mistakes. are definitely mistakes. You, yeah, you, can't, you can correct that, though. Yeah, you can correct that. You, and you, I watched I the punter. The punter took too many steps. He got a little too cute. Yeah. Got, yeah I don't think he even realized the pressure was coming. Right. I don't he, think, he, he was actually like, very cool. He came man. right through the middle of two guys yep. that were that were in the blocking wall. Uh, I was in the end zone behind that, so I could see all that happening. I said, what the hell did I just see? Yeah. I mean, as a special teams coordinator that I was last year, so now I'm watching all this stuff, and I'm just like, okay, I'm looking at how they line up. I'm like, okay, who? That guy's got that guy. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Boom. Boom. The worst sound you want to hear. Boom. That's a bad sound. But it was partly his own fault. He took too much. Yes. Time. He took too many. And steps. after that, he didn't do that anymore. No, no. He got it off quicker. Yes, he did. And the there's no reason for him to, you know, pee foot around. You don't need to do now, that. Now, it's, it's he's, what, what, year, what, year is the, what year is he? It's his first year. It's his first year. Yeah, he yeah. didn't put. He he's didn't learning. put. Like, we, we had an all American back there, so he he's learning. He's he yeah, was he's a lot better him. after that. I promise you that. Yeah, yeah no doubt. <laughs> but he, hey, he Bruce, um, we're we're gonna let we're gonna let you depart. Uh, any closing thoughts? Um, going into I'm the looking team forward tomorrow? to watching us play tomorrow. I just want to see progression. I don't want to see any more injuries. I want to see Miami take take it seriously and beat them and get it over with and let the, let the young kids play so we get some experience. And then go from there. I'm not looking into Temple yet. I want to see this game tomorrow. I, I don't expect we're going to – I don't think it's going to be a great game. But it's a great game, and Miami plays the way they played on Saturday. That's what I care about. I don't want to see any anybody being flat. Every time we play Florida State in the past, we were flat. Let's not do that anymore. Let's just, you know. I like it. Out. Let's choke them out. Stop on like it. it. <laughs> I like it. As, as, Randall Hill, as Randall Hill used to say, let's crush them like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, Bruce. All right, you guys. Be well. All right, Bruce. See you, see you, we'll see you next week. All right, LT. I got some good word associations for you tonight. All right, let's get it. We're gonna, I'm, uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little ornery, and you know, whatever. So I'm <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna start with Bobby Petrino, Coach P. 
He was so excited before that game. I t- had a chance to talk to him. Even took a picture with him. Um, he was excited about the opportunity he had. To, you know, we talked about um, him coaching again, uh, not being a head coach, having to deal with everything that has to go along with being a head coach. Um, I thought that, and we talked about this earlier, I thought Gidry did a hell of a job against a hell of an offensive coordinator um, to basically neutralize some of his strength. Um, he will get it together. You know, I think the problem is going to be out there listening to the Texas A&M fans. Um, if it continues to get better or get worse, where where is Jimbo in all this? That's going to be the big issue. But I think Coach P is going to do his thing. He's going to put up some numbers this year, and they're going to be a pretty good team under his tutelage. So I, I, I think that this is one game that, you know, he's going, to, he's going to be pissed off about, but he's going to take it out on some people in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Uh, Bethune Cookman. Uh, Coach Co- Bethune Cookman uh, University, who was supposed to be coached by Ed Reed, uh, stole my next they, one. <laughs> yeah, they 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 got a they got a very uphill battle. I think for them, um, they're going to make sure they're going to have to try to stay as healthy as they can. Uh, try to get guys as much experience. I know they're excited about this opportunity to to get to play um, the University of Miami uh, in this stadium. Probably be the biggest game of the year for them as far as uh, expectation uh, for these kids. Because I would think that if you're at a smaller school getting to play a team like Miami under the big lights, you circle this game. So um, they're hopefully they can stay healthy. Uh, I don't really see them competing much i think the game should be over by halftime but who knows maybe they put something together and and if they do we're gonna be very upset as as, uh as fans because we're we're still riding this wave of this texas a&m victory and we expect to see a consistent uh game and bcu will will come put on a great halftime performance and then they get back on the bus and they'll ride to daytona because they ain't flying down here i'll tell you that (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty safe assumption. All right, you right. mentioned him, but I'm going to throw him out there anyway so you can talk about him a little more. What's Ed Reed thinking right now? Man, E. Reed, the best ED. Uh, man, and how much different would this game be if he had remained? Yeah, I mean that that would have been very different if, if uh, you know the the thought process as far as you know it's unfortunate for him when he had an opportunity and and uh, things just didn't work out there at Bethune so um you know man it would have been great to see him being a head coach but th- these are things in life you know you learn along the way you know I I had to learn some things the hard way you know uh I, I learned from the FIU event to uh even if it's a tape record tape tape delay game don't say what you're thinking so right. <laughs> you got to learn, you know, and he had to learn. He said some things before he got a paycheck and he had to pay. So it is what it is. Let me throw this one out there. Deion Sanders. Prime time. He's doing a good job out there. I'm, I'm, wow. uh, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm happy for him um, and what he was able to do there. I think what he brings is, confidence. I think what he's doing with those guys is giving them confidence um, that they can compete. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you you get coached hard, but you get loved up. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about what the job that he's doing over there. And I hope it continues. I Hell, I actually hope they, they continue to win um, because I think America needs to see this. You know, they need to see, I mean, because I'm pretty sure People are tuning in. He is the new Miami. He is the new Miami back in the day. People want to hate you because they, you know, here it is. You're a brown skin guy talking with a lot of confidence, and he's not caring about nothing else. You know, it's about music. Yeah, it's about him and his team, and he don't give a damn. And that's the that's the mindset we had. It's about our team and uh, our program and. uh, Kudos to him. It kind of reminds me of the old Michigan Wolverine basketball team, the Fab Five and the Miami Hurricanes. Talk you know, trash. Reading, and, <laughs> go ahead. No, I was going to say, I was reading an article. Um, yeah, I was reading it earlier today. 
you know he he was talking to his marketing rep about uh helping uh, i think it was florida state recruit mm. and his marketing rep said to him why would you go help florida state recruit why don't you be a head coach and that's mm. how he got into coaching wow. from from his marketing rep saying don't go help them recruit you be a head coach it's an amazing story and he yeah, said yeah. you know what you're right and that's when he got did the deal with jackson state and Mm -hmm. the and the first, the first first thing in order was getting his degree from Talladega. <laughs> I mean, that was the most important thing. And it's like all of us. I mean, I had to go back and finish mine. Ter Terrell Buckley had to go back. A lot of guys go back and finish. The most important thing is, is definitely finishing and, mm -hmm. and being able to, you know, I've always said the difference between me getting that degree and having a degree and not having a degree was the jobs that I got after that, it wasn't a favor. You know, favors run out sometimes. But when you have your degree, they can't take that from you, and now you're the best man for the job. Yeah. And that's, that's how it rolls. How about the way he detached himself from Florida State? Well, That was, cra that was crazy. The last no, week when he, when he it, kind of said, I'm not a Seminole or hey, whatever. Man. Hey, they need Dion. Dion doesn't need them. Think wow. about it. They need him when the guys walk in there and they see a Dion Sanders picture up or – statue or Terrell Buckley, all the he doesn't need them. And that's what I tried to tell some of the Florida State fans. He doesn't need you guys anymore. Man. And you know, they're like, well, he should be more thankful to us for what? You got what you got out of him. He got what he got out of you. And I'm sorry you didn't get Kamari McLean and the rest of them guys or Travis Hunter. But he had a job to do too. It's just like if I was at Louisville, I had a job to do. That's why he didn't get Lamar Jackson. Our job is to do what we're supposed to do. And no he's doing a damn good job so far. No doubt. I mean, we're seeing that right now with Randy up at Florida State. He's recruiting yeah. like a maniac. Like, they're going head-to-head -head with Randy like yeah. crazy this, this year. Hey, man, it, it is what it is. I mean, we were taught at Miami to win. When Randy was at Miami in the heydays. He's he's winning. He's he's He is doing his job, what he's paid to do. And sometimes you got to, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Who's paying your checks? Right, let me throw this one at you. Shannon Dawson. Oh, Shannon Dawson, great job. Mm, thumbs up. Great game plan. Continue to be uh to show that imagination and, and call you know, we, we we lost that last year. We lost it. We we it was uh two backs and cloud of dust or whatever it was. I don't know what the hell it was that, that uh a man was calling, but uh <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, good job. Great job by him, and I'm going to throw Gidra in there, too. Great job by the coordinators. Great job to be able to um, do what you did against Texas and m Now, let's keep it going. Let's get this Bethune. Let's get the next one, and then we'll we'll, we'll talk bigger and better games. How about that? All right, and a week would not be complete if I didn't end with Mario Cristobal. Mario, first of all, great job getting your staff in order. Uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out in the beginning. You make these hires, things not right. I think that he's brought in some guys now that it seems like it's a better fit. You know, being around those guys, it seems like they actually enjoy being around each other. And that's important, man. You don't want to be on the staff where guys are going. I mean, obviously we have to go home, but when you're there, you enjoy being around each other. I've been on staffs or been around staffs where guys really didn't want to be around each other. And it shows. And the kids can see it too. So, Kudos to Mario for putting that, that staff together um, and building this culture. Culture is down 10-0, 17-7, was it 17-7? And still playing hard and coming back, going up, taking the lead, and then blowing them out. I mean, that's culture. That's them believing in their what their head coach is preaching. So good job, Mario. Let's go out tomorrow and let's Continue to be consistent. I don't want to say beat them 90 to nothing, but, you know, you try to put as many points. Get get some playing time for some of these young players. That's the most important thing. Get some playing time so you can find out, you can build that depth, and uh, you just go from there. Yeah. All right, LT. Uh, well, I, I think we've pretty much covered just about every topic tonight. Though we've been all over the place, but it's all been yep. good. Um, Got to thank Canesware one more time. Yep. Yep. Um, 2655 South University Drive in Davie. Uh, head on over there if you're 
head on over to Canesware. That's what the, right. that's, what the that's what their commercials say. And, uh, you know, if you're local, great place to stop on your way to the stadium tomorrow night. Uh, if you're not local, just go to Canesware.com. You can buy any of that great stuff you see behind Lamar and behind me uh, here, here tonight um, on their website, Canesware.com. Uh, tomorrow night, we got Bethune Cookman come in into the rock and uh, hopefully everybody stays healthy. The Wildcats. The Wildcats. Hopefully everybody stays healthy and we can enjoy the halftime show with it, with peace of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you'll see any of the injured guys tomorrow night. You're not going to see Mesador. You're not going to see Cam. Probably won't see Fletcher. Um, but, it, you know, there'll, there'll be plenty of firepower on the Kane sideline. I don't think you have to worry about any of that for this game. It's it's best to get everybody healthy for the challenges that come ahead. And uh, somebody brought up Temple earlier in the show, and I did have a chance to look up and see. Yes, they did lose to Rutgers 36 mm. to 7 after mm. beating Akron 24 21. But, you know, that is obviously going to be another game that Miami's going to go into as a heavy favorite and right. um, set up the, the return for Georgia Tech. Hopefully they get to Carolina 5 and 0, and then we could see a real big game yeah. again. And, um, It'll be pretty darn interesting. Um, so for Lamar, I'm Gary. Thank you so much for making us part of your night tonight. And we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the game tomorrow night. Go Goodbye. Kings.